Hey everybody, we're back at my parents' cabin uh, right near our property in Atlanta. And uh, we've been retrofitting this for a while. If you've seen the series on air tightening the crawl space and dealing with the radon spike that inevitably happened because we did that. Anyway, now we're remodeling the kitchen. And uh, so because they're doing a remodel, and this is a cue for anybody who's in remodeling business, we are fixing the ventilation. So the kitchen exhaust system uh, is being done correctly this time and we're going to do a makeup air system and I'll explain how and why we're doing this. All right, so this is what layers and layers of construction from the 1950s looks like. We got the subfloor down now, which is nice, but you can see we got all kinds of stuff. That is what used to be the kitchen exhaust uh, vent, which was just a fan in the wall and that's normal for at that age of um, uh, ventilation it was just a fan in the wall that was supposed to take all the stuff out. Now, the new way that the kitchen is going to work is that there will be an L here, cabinets, and then the stove, the range, will be here. And the way that a range is constructed is useful for ventilation because the bottom of it doesn't have a plate. So the bottom is kind of open. And we're going to introduce the makeup air here and take the exhaust air out through the roof there. You could do things like putting the uh, an attic fan in place uh, so that the fan itself isn't in the space with you, but that ends up, now you have to go up in the attic if you're gonna maintain or have to fix or replace that unit, which is kind of a pain in the butt. You could do it on the rooftop as well, but that has its own issues also. So we're just gonna put a regular old chimney style uh, range hood that hopefully has a bowl shape on it. If you didn't do the makeup air introduced right at the source of the exhaust, the blower door test on this house is about 3,000, which means that this house being 2,000 square feet is pretty leaky. So air will come in. We're not going to depressurize this space a whole lot. Two things though. Number one, we have an atmospheric draft water heater in the crawl space, which is totally connected to the house now, especially because we encapsulated it. Um, and so we're in danger of backdrafting that water heater, even if we get to a negative five Pascal depressurization, which is very common in homes. Second thing is that we don't really want the air to be seeping in all over the house. We want to have the makeup air for this so that we can kind of have a, a, the a, kind of a loop so that air leaves the house, conditioned air leaves the house, and then air comes in to replace that from outside, which is unconditioned which has its own issues that we're going to talk about in a minute, and then uh, is able to be part, as hopefully a big part, of the air that then gets jetted outside again. So hopefully you only take one breath of air from the inside, and then the rest of it is this outside air that's constantly looping to replace the air that just left. So that's the theory. Um, and the reason that we're bringing it in underneath is because you want to bring it in in the area that you're cooking in anyway. And if you can have it kind of be a capture, like a, you know, how you walk into a store in the summertime and they'll have a sheet of air being the only thing that separates the inside and the outside. They've got wide open doors and then they've just got this air sheet. It's pretty good at actually containing things and kind of directing the environment to do what you want. So that's the concept here. It's not a whole lot of air we're talking about. 300, 500 CFM max. It's not like a 1200 CFM fan that you'd see in some um, ritzy houses nowadays. But what we've got here is an eight inch round duct coming to a boot in the floor uh, that is has no flange because it's a floor boot. Uh, and then this is a four by 14. So we've got it oriented this way, the center line of the uh, stove is right there, so it's going to be coming up right through the center, and it'll be emptying the air into the inside. Now, one thing is that this air is going to be either warm and moist in the summertime or cold and dry in the wintertime. And if we were going to floor all of this in hardwood, then I would be very cautious about this technique because the cold air, when you're like on a 30 degree day, you turn on that exhaust hood, it activates the makeup air damper that's going to bring air in from outside. It's going to make the area localized right around this floor vent very cold, very fast, which means that if you have hardwood, and I speak from experience in our own house, it will start to audibly crack 
and it will be pulling the seams apart and the glue, the, the sealant that you used on it, not the sealant, but the finish, will start to, to crack and it'll be separating in like accelerated time. This happens in homes all the time, but it's like over a moderate period of time. So you won't hear the audible cracks. You won't get quite as aggressive a shrinking of the wood. So this is gonna be tile and we're introducing it underneath the stove and the stove is uniquely built to deal with extreme temperature fluctuations. It's all metal, it's all the same material. So it's not gonna be uh, breaking the stove to have it go undergo temperature fluctuations and be slightly maybe cooling down the insulated uh, cooking chamber because it's got, that's what the cooking element does is it'll warm up the space again uh, if it needs to inside the oven, just in case the oven gets cooled down by this cold air. Now I'm about to show you why you won't see a whole lot of videos about real life applications of this. And it's because we now have to go down into the space where the real work gets done, which looks like this. So I'm using my phone and not my nice camera because obviously this is not really a safe working environment just for a human being to be in, much less to be carrying a bunch of film equipment around. Oof. Okay, so uh, there is the elbow that's coming down that's going to uh, connect to that boot. It's pointing straight at us. There's This is a strap that's gonna hold up the eight inch round duct that's gonna come this way. We've got about 10, 10 feet of run before we hit this thing. So this is the elbow that goes to this boot that's connected to outside. Let me show you how this is put together. So what we have is a cinder block wall that has these vents cut into it, cut. Um, <laughs> it's pretty funny, uh, totally gross. So uh, that is what you'd see from the outside. Here's the struggle of filmmaking in a crawl space. That's the vent that you would see from the outside. And this is foam uh, board that my dad has put in place just to seal it temporarily. There's a brick on the other side of this. So this is the only thing separating us from outside. When I remove this foam, I'll be able to stick my hand straight outside. And what I, what you'll be in is a kind of a window well that's solid concrete. You don't want to vacuum that out. This is where all of the air is going to be coming in to replace. So what you don't want to do is just put your duct coming here and then just put it here. Because what that means is that all of this dust, all of this dirt will get picked up and brought inside the house. Um, and if you have a filter in line, which is a good idea, then it's gonna get caked a lot sooner. So you wanna go all the way to that grill. And so what we built is, this is a boot that's eight inch round to again, four by 14. This one though, I got with the flange on it. So this is like a wall boot. Um, and then I sealed it to a short length of, <sighs> Because it's a boot, they don't have four by 14 ductwork. You can get three and a half by 14. So that's what we did. So you can see it's slightly downsized here. And then you just seal it, seal the crap out of it. Um, obviously you fasten it with the screws. We're using Malco um, zip in screws, which are pretty easy to work with. Like the big problem down here is that you're like working in really close quarters and you don't have time to pre-drill or you shouldn't make time to pre-drill when you've got things like zip-in screws that can just do it all in one go. So at the bottom of this, uh, I've had to do some surgery. So you can see I've uh, cut and then splayed out a flange that I've homemade, but then I had to cut it away here because this is not a rectangle. And so trying to fit this thing in there and put it flat against this grill uh, means that I have to bypass some of this concrete that's jutting out and I could take the time to like chip away at this thing But frankly if as long as you got it pretty good uh, good enough for <laughs> For show business, then that's fine Okay, so I cut the length of the square duct just so that we could basically perfectly get this flange pressed up against that wood and then screw it in place 
and obviously I removed the screws to show you guys how this works. But the thing that I'd like to point out, aside from that I've got, you can see the, it's pressed up against the metal outside there. Uh, and I'm going to um, seal that probably from outside. What we're gonna do is, uh, <laughs> I haven't figured that part out exactly yet, but there's no other way to do this. Um, like, there's just, you're just gonna have to deal with stuff like this. So anyway, the point that I wanna make here though is this big ragged hole, um, you know, I wanna like know whether I care about this or not. If I'm not gonna care about it, then what I'm gonna wanna do is seal around the grate at the outside, which is probably what I'm gonna end up doing. And then you're gonna wanna put a screen to make sure bugs, mosquitoes, and cockroaches and ants and stuff like that don't crawl into your makeup air and then get sucked in and distributed into your house for free. That would be gross. And so um, that's number one is big bugs and stuff like that. A screen would be necessary. The other thing is filtered air. This happens to be in a carport. And so I'm not so worried about um, like water getting in here, for example, but pollen is a big problem around here. And so if I wanted to filter out the pollen so that it doesn't get sucked in and distributed into the house um, as the makeup air, then I'd want to put in here somewhere a filter. Now, I want to be able to get at it and access it, which means that I can build a, a kind of a rig, a box out there that I could clean the filter or change the filter. And it could be something like a an oven filter. Or I could put in line here, and we're gonna be using an April layer makeup air damper that's eight inches that's activated off of either electrical uh, power from the exhaust fan or pressure. And we're gonna, I'm gonna show you the difference between those in a, another video. But um, the other option here is to jerry rig a ventilator, a power ventilator that April Air has. It's just a supply only ventilator and put it in line here because it has a built in MERV 13 filter. So I just wanted to get you guys in here to see the progress as it's going. This is a real messy project. It's very real life. I'm sure that there are HVAC guys out there who are like, oh, you got it so easy. Look at that crawl space he's working on. It's like, there's no dirt. It's clean. Uh, he's not having to wear a mask. Yes, like this is, we've, we've prepped the space pretty well over the years to make it easier for this to happen. But um, know that if you're trying to retrofit ventilation into an existing house, this is the kind of stuff that you're going to have to think through. And so creative thinking, giving your professionals time and money to think, to stop and just be down here and think about it before they just pull the trigger and start installing stuff. Incredibly important. So stay tuned so you can watch the rest of this series and you can go back also and watch the rest of the retrofit of this cabin as well. Uh, you can see more about upcoming home diagnosis footage that we're going to be releasing, which we're very excited about. Uh, please do join our Patreon membership if you would like to help support our work in trying to educate people about the science of homes. And uh, comment below if you have other things to add about makeup air, kitchen ventilation, ventilation in general. Tune in next time.